Welcome back to our mobile home makeover. We just finished up with the electrical work and we're ready to move on to insulation. This wall is an interior wall that we insulated with the old exterior insulation. We built out the studs to five and a half inches and now we're gonna insulate the exterior walls, this wall and this wall, with five and a half inch thick rock wool insulation. This room is gonna be super efficient and toasty when we're done. But there's one job I got to do before I start. This has been bothering me ever since last night. When I noticed it, I said, ugh, and now it's just driving me crazy. So I'm, I'm going to try to fix it. Let me show you what's wrong. When I was doing the electrical work, I wasn't really thinking when I got to this one. And I put these blocks in because I just happened to have them sitting here. And I, I wanted to move these outlets over an inch and a half. So I put these blocks of wood in. Everything was fine. I wasn't thinking about insulation. And now that I'm looking at it, I'm gonna have to cut my insulation like this, around the box, down here, around another one, plus cutting it back here to fit in this gap. That is a lot of notching and cutting and potential for gaps, cracks, air leaks. That's a waste of my time. I'm taking this all out and then I'm gonna put in um, a two by six from the floor up to at least here and this calling it a day. It'll be so much easier to cut around. This is just one of those dumb mistakes you make um, just from not paying attention. Like, I wasn't thinking ahead far enough. Just prying out the, the wire staples first without damaging the wires. Now, if this had been an interior wall, yeah, that's no big deal. Use what you got, make it happen. But since we have to insulate this wall, I really shouldn't make it complicated for myself. And we want to do this project right. We don't want to cheap out. You know, we're only saving, what, a couple dollars worth of wood. Of wood. Hacking away at these sta wire staples. Getting them out of the way. You don't always think ahead on everything. And sometimes things don't go as well as you hope. So you just have to fix it. It's better to fix it now than to leave it and regret it. There it is, all clean. Removed any staples, any anything that's in here. And now, Let's get a piece of wood cut. Now this board has a little bit of a uh, crook or a crown to it, same difference. And I'm just gonna get rid of it. I don't know if you can see it. I'm just gonna try to trim off this little piece. This is a bad two by six that I didn't use on the uh, ceiling. I had a couple of extras. I'm just gonna cut off a little bit right there to straighten it out so it's not pushing out the wall. That should straighten it out enough. All right, notched out the bottom to fit around my spacer. Let's see how this looks. Let me remark my box locations. That is a much cleaner installation. The wire is much straighter. I feel better about it. And now it'll be easier to cut the installation. You know, it'll just be much easier. The mess is clean and I got the installation. Now this is pretty exciting, not just because I want to get this room closed in, but because I've never used this type of insulation before. So I'm excited to use it. This is a rock wool type of uh, mineral, mineral wool insulation and it's supposed to be pretty cool. So let's try it out. I'll get my mask on, don't worry. So this is what it looks like. Yeah, it is pretty dense. All right, so before I started, I went ahead and spray foamed all the holes where the wires came off of the floor or went into the ceiling. So all those holes have been spray foamed. And now I'm going to start cutting this insulation. 
Uh, I was looking online to find out what do you cut this with. I found an insulation knife that was made to cut it and it just looked like a regular serrated knife. So I said instead of spending the money I would try my own. I found this knife which is just an old bread knife. Uh, this was in the house when we moved in so we don't use it. And I'm going to try it and see how this cuts the insulation. Our walls are a little bit tricky because since I built them out I have these uh, gaps back here. And that's pretty much around the whole room I have these gaps. Now I could have put a blocking in here and filled them in but it decided to not do that. So I'm just going to go ahead and try to notch the insulation to fit down here. I'm going to see how that works. That cuts nice. Oh, it's snug. Alright guys, this is my first time, so I wasn't expecting this. This is kind of, it's strange feeling. It's not like fiberglass. I'm not trying to push it in. I know you should never crush insulation. I'm just trying to work it down behind that board. And it's so snug between the joists, or the studs, that it's, it's hard to get it to slide down. I end up crushing it a little bit. But I think I got it there. I'll make sure the bottom is in good and snug first. Look at the fill here. Look how excellent that is covering. Wow, that's cool. I'm really liking this stuff. This is awesome. Now at the top I have the opposite problem. I have a gap because of my wall being built out. So I can use these pieces that I cut off the bottom to fill in the gap. Well, if I could do it with both hands, you get the point. That worked out perfectly. So I can use the scrap from the bottom that I cut off up at the top and we'll have no waste. Awesome. This stuff is cool. I'm really liking this. This is way better than fiberglass so far. So that was one bundle down. With one bundle, I was able to do what you can see here. It doesn't go very far, but we should have enough to get the whole room done, so that's okay. So far, this is actually a joy to work with. I usually don't like insulation work, but this hasn't been so bad. It's actually more relaxing than I thought. It's kind of just like cutting the insulation is so soft with the knife. It's just, you don't even, it's just like butter. It's just cutting it. It's quiet, it's soft, it's fluffy. I don't know, this is kind of a relaxing job. I think we did it. That's cool. That wasn't so bad. Really cool. We did it guys. If we can do this, we got the rest of it, no problem. What was it? Well guys, look at this. This is all I have left right now. Little tiny scraps. I've been so efficient with my use of the materials. And we got all of this done. All of this. Skip the window. Over here. Look at how good this looks. And can you believe that I have to open up another bundle just for this? That's all I have left. But, we just don't have enough here, so 
One more. There you go. And it is done. I did my best. It looks really good. I think. You know, I found that if there's a spot that's kind of tucked back, if I just rub my knife in, in here, it kind of fluffs up the insulation, loosens it up from the stud. So I've been kind of doing that, making sure it's not compressed. Fluff it up a little, right? All in all, I'd say that's a job well done. First time using uh, this type of insulation. And I liked it, that was fun. I can't believe I'm done already. Oh, I wanted to get a two inch foam board at Home Depot and cut it to fit in there. Like a panel. You don't just want to use rock wool. It'd be so hard to get it to stay in that two inch. Now that all the insulation is done, it's looking good. Ashley came in, inspected it, gave it the okay. She even showed me how to fix this spot above the window. Let me show you. There it is. I was gonna buy a two inch foam board and she said, why not just put the insulation up there? <laughs> it was so basic and easy. Doug always likes to overcomplicate things and yeah. I have to be the one that says like just do it normal and easy. So it's done. So now you're gonna help me get the plastic there it is. vapor barrier on the walls. So this is a six mil plastic sheeting and we're just gonna staple it up on the exterior. This is an interior wall so we don't need it there. Just here and here. And then the ceiling. Ceiling next. We have our plastic cut and we're gonna to try to wrap it from this corner straight around so it's one solid piece, less seams for air to come in. Uh, so we're just gonna pull it up, start stapling it. Pretty basic job, right? Mm -hmm. So my idea is to just stretch it around the box as tightly as I can. So it still keeps the air yeah. seal the best that we can. That came out good. Yeah. So now that the walls are up, we're ready to do the ceiling. We just rolled it out and cut it to length. So now we gotta try to hold it up, staple it up straight and hope it comes out good. We only got the one work platform, but luckily we got the drywall in here. So we'll try to make it work. All right, so this is a little more difficult, but yeah. we're getting there. I'm worried about it not being straight and then it's going to start going at, at an angle and by the time we get to the end of the room it won't be enough plastic. So we're just trying to make sure it's kind of going in somewhat straight like. Well, I can't believe we just did that. We got it up and it doesn't look too bad. It's got a few wrinkles in it, but nothing that's gonna stop the drywall. Look at that. The room is coming together. Now, if you're just joining us, you might be wondering why we're putting plastic up with no insulation in the attic. We're gonna be blowing in cellulose insulation later. After the drywall's up, we're gonna try to get up there and blow it in. We'll yeah. see how it goes. I think that's usually how they do it. I don't know how else he could do it. So we'll just wait and see what happens. So right now I'm cutting, can you see it? Holes for the light fixtures. So I'm going to be cutting the rest of them right now. 
So I'll just carefully make a circle. Oh, oh. I'm trying to leave like a quarter inch. So I have a little room to stretch it around it and keep a pretty good air seal. So there it is, another job done. I don't know what stage this is. We did stage one, stage two. This is like four? Five, five? maybe. Five, I don't know, I lost track, but it's another job done, one step closer. Drywall is next. I think we're just ready for drywall. We don't spend a lot of time on this each day. We just kind of take it a little at a time. There's no rush on this property to really, Yeah. like, work all day long and get it all done so we're just doing a little here a little there and we're making huge progress well i hope you guys enjoyed the video as always we'll have another one coming soon so until next time take care bye one last thing before we go i was just cleaning up the room always keep your room clean when you're working because it makes the next job so much easier but i wanted to talk about the insulation today i almost forgot to say this when I was working, I put my dust mask on and I didn't bother putting on any other protection besides my gloves because I figured it's new insulation, it's clean, it won't be so bad. I've done fiberglass insulation before and I just wear my regular clothes, but when I was done, I was covered in the mineral wool and it itches just like fiberglass. So my arms were itchy and it was covering my clothes. So now I have clothes that are just saturated, my snow pants, my shirt, they're just saturated with that insulation and I'm going to try to wash it but I don't know how well it's going to wash out. I really should have put my Tyvek suit on. I thought, eh, who puts a Tyvek suit on to put insulation in? I should have done it. It would have saved my clothes and that means less insulation getting into other people's clothes. I'll wash them separately but you know what I'm saying. So next time I'll probably throw my Tyvek suit on. Just wanted to say that, that I should have done it. I didn't do it. Now I'm almost positive I had something else I wanted to say, but I can't remember right now. So I'll leave you with that. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Take care.